Unless you're used to it, it's pretty shocking to see wind turbines strung along the mountains like Christmas ornaments on a Christmas tree. Carol and I were impressed while heading west on West Virginia Highway 48, and it turns out we were able to get pretty close and personal to these energy-producing pinwheels. Let's get this out of the way. No, I'm not a scientist, but I can read, and sometimes I have common sense. Sometimes. And today, I'm feeling lucky with my common sense. This may or may not be an informative video. I guess it just depends on how much you know on the subject. I've included some sources in the description, but let's be honest, are you really going to check the description? I dare you to check the description. And if you do, let us know if you find anything interesting in the comments. Either way, in this video, you're going to see some wind turbines break some wind. Some of you watching this video may live near wind turbines that I call windmills at times in this video because I like Cervantes. <laughs> but for those of you who live near these things, be it West Virginia or elsewhere, have some patience with people like me who've only seen them on the screen or while on vacation or something like that, but never riding around in the mountains. I guess you can say they snuck up on us. <laughs> wow, that's a scary thought. Boo. <laughs> a few weeks ago, while making a video on Bickle Knob Observation Tower, I saw this in the distance. And this is all I got, so I didn't include this in that video. But while making my last video, we ran right into a parade of wind turbines. Well, they weren't actually walking down the street or playing in a band or anything like that. But they looked like they were on the march. It's not the first time we've seen them in their natural habitat. For it is the mating season for the wind turbines of the Appalachian Mountains. The female wind turbine attracts her mate by spinning her blades like so. And the male turbine spins its blades and spends a lot of money, thus ensuring the species will survive the harsh winter that is to come. Carolyn and I noticed them in Arizona near the Grand Canyon way back in 2017. But we've never been around anything quite like this. And this is like, well, I don't know what this is like, and that's why I'm making this video. If you're like me and this is new to you, let me give you the story of these wind whisperers. Some say that if we can put a man on the moon, we can do anything. But can we solve our energy problem in time? Nearly half of our oil is now imported. Much is wasted. We are exhausting our irreplaceable energy resources. Do we have time? Think about it. What then, indeed? Well, I'll tell you what then, we're going to build wind turbines and drive cars the size of a matchbox. Now, if you look into the history of wind energy, you're going to have to suffer through some things that should be narrated by your favorite PBS narrator. <laughs> You know, they wax strong and poetic about how humans have been using the energy of the wind for thousands of years. Because the easiest way to define energy is the work that a certain force can do. So energy is the working part of doing something. But we're talking about using the wind to make electricity to power our matchbox cars and these personal surveillance devices. I miss cars of the 1970s. This is my favorite, the 1974 Continental Lincoln. Wait a minute, read first that. Lincoln Continental. Handles like a dream, and it gets about eight miles to the gallon, give or take, mostly take. If this baby could be powered by a battery, I'd need a hundred or more wind turbines just to drive around town, maybe. Anyway, we've been turning wind into electricity since the 1890s. <laughs> yeah, I know, mind blown, right? But it would take about another hundred years and an energy crisis to get us thinking about wind as a solid and reliable energy source. Under Jimmy Carter, Congress passed the Public Utility Regulatory Policies Act of 1978, which requires companies to buy a certain amount of electricity from renewable energy sources, including wind. Yes, some things happen here and there, but not really. In 1992, George Bush Sr. made it a little worthwhile to invest into wind energy by offering a tax credit, but still it was kind of slow. And it's been slow. But wind energy has come a long way. These days, wind energy farms are beginning to pop up everywhere. <laughs> All of the wind in West Virginia is generated by these windmills. Okay, that, that's not true. Okay, that, that's not true. So don't comment and say, it's fake news. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. The U.S. Department of Energy determined that West Virginia is not just windy, but windy enough to produce electricity. 
Currently, there are 376 wind turbines. The wind farm around Backbone Mountain or Mountaineer Wind Energy Center came online back in 2002, so it's old news if you're local. But for tourists like me, it's like something out of a science fiction movie, man. It's funny because I would have assumed that this was a project birthed during the recession. Instead, well, it's old news. Anyway, back in 2002, Mountaineer was the first wind farm in West Virginia and the largest wind farm east of the Mississippi River. Mountaineer Wind Energy Center is owned and operated by Florida Power & Light. The power produced here is sold in markets across the Mid-Atlantic region. Mountaineer Wind Energy Center generates enough electricity to power approximately 20,000 homes. Not bad. I I, I guess. Honestly, I don't know if that's good or not. But would you look at the size of these things? Here's a fun fact. If I'm reading this right, as of 2020, these wind turbines are responsible for 2.7% of the in-state electricity production. I guess that's good. I mean, it, it, it seems kind of low, but they're building more, and I guess the more you build, the more power you get. So, are wind turbines efficient? Well, most turbines extract about 50% of the energy from the wind that passes through the rotor area. That's what the website says. Well, when you build these things, you're going to have some pollution. And then there's the enormous amount of space they take up. That can't be good. I guess we're a step closer? There's a lot of maintenance involved, and it's very expensive. They break down a lot. Here's another problem. Windy places are often in remote places, like here in this part of West Virginia. In case you didn't know, we tend to use more power where more people live. Duh. Like New York City. Bringing energy from remote places to urban populations, well, that isn't easy. Takes up a lot of space. It's messy, and it kind of wrecks the environment in its own way. If you're a landowner in one of these remote windy places, then there's some money in wind farming. But often there's more money in doing something else with your land. And it takes a lot of land to make these spinning wheels spin. Regardless, they're pretty neat. But I guess that's because I'm not used to seeing them strung out across the mountains. Modern wind turbines are 700 feet tall. The idea behind building bigger turbines is simple enough. Bigger blades, more energy, fewer turbines. Unfortunately, there's this thing called a wind shadow effect. Modern wind turbines have to be placed farther apart to offset this effect. So, building them bigger just means they take up more space, meaning you can't generate as much electricity without using a lot more land. And then there's the view. As cool looking as these things are to look at, a lot of communities aren't interested in staring at propellers all the time. And I can't say I'd be thrilled about that either. What's your opinion about wind turbines? Years ago, wind turbines weren't too bird friendly. Stupid birds not knowing what a wind turbine looks like. But that's improved a great deal. Wind turbines kill a lot of bats, too. I guess bats tend to chase after the blades. Stupid bats chasing windmills like Don Quixote. The whole way over here, all along Highway 48, we started seeing these amazing windmills, and they are amazing. In fact, you can actually hear them as they go around and around and around. Alternate ways that we can get energy into our new electric cars, self-driving cars, AI, and all that other stuff. I mean, we gotta have power, right? I think the coolest part is how big they are, and, well, and also, they're loud. So what do you think about wind turbines? Let me know in the comments. <laughs>